Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk a lot about matrices and vectors. And in today's part 61, we will talk about so-called similar matrices. On an abstract level, we will see that two similar matrices describe the same linear map. However, before we start with the definition, you already know, first I want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube, on Patreon or by other means. And please note, as a supporter, you get additional material and early access for all new videos. Okay, then let's immediately start with the important definition of the day, the definition of similar matrices. And what we need are two square matrices, so let's call them A and B. And moreover, you already know, we can consider even the general case where we have complex numbers as entries. So in particular, this includes our real case. And now, A and B are called similar to each other if we can transform the one into the other one. More precisely, this is the case if we find an invertible matrix S such that S inverse BS is equal to A. Hence, you see, the important thing here is that we have the same matrix S on the left hand side and the right hand side. However, on one side we need the inverse, so it's important that we have an invertible square matrix S here. So it's not so complicated, but still similarity as a notion for matrices is important to remember. Indeed, in some sense, it gives us the essential properties of the matrix A and B. For example, if we go to the corresponding linear maps FA and FB, then it follows that injectivity is independent of the matrix we choose. Or more concretely, FA is injective if and only if FB is injective. In fact, I would say this is a very nice exercise because it's about the kernel of the two matrices A and B. However, I would say this is a very nice property you should immediately remember when we talk about similar matrices. Moreover, you can also show that the equivalence holds for the subjectivity as well. Hence, you already can remember similar matrices give very similar linear maps. And indeed, soon we will show that both linear maps are connected by a so-called change of basis. So what people say is essentially that we have the same linear map just in different coordinate systems. And therefore, if you have a very particular problem you want to solve, you would change the coordinate system in one where your calculations get easier. However, that's definitely something for a different video, because here I first want to talk about the properties of similar matrices. And at this point you might already know, we are very interested in eigenvalues. And indeed, it turns out that similar matrices have the same characteristic polynomial. Hence, what we have is, if A and B are similar, the spectrum of A and B are the same. So they have exactly the same eigenvalues and also the algebraic multiplicities are the same as well. Therefore, you should remember, such a transformation with an invertible matrix S does not change the spectrum and not the algebraic multiplicities. And at this point, you can also think about what happens with the geometric multiplicities. And maybe, I can already give you a little spoiler, they will also not change under this transformation. So the dimensions of the eigenspaces will not change, but the eigenspaces themselves could change. However, as we have stated here, first we want to talk about the characteristic polynomial. And this one, you know, we have denoted by PA and the variable in the polynomial we choose as the complex number lambda. And by definition, this one is given by the determinant of A minus lambda identity matrix. So this is a well-defined polynomial of degree n. And now, in the next step, we can simply put in the similarity definition here. This means, instead of A, we now write S inverse B S. And then, in the next step, the only thing we have to do is to rewrite the identity matrix as S inverse times S. Because then, we can factorize the whole thing with S inverse on the left and S on the right hand side. Obviously, this is the same, because S inverse times S is the identity matrix again. However, now we can simply use that we already know that the determinant is multiplicative. This means we can write the thing here as a product of three determinants. 
and then we see we already have the characteristic polynomial of b here in the middle. Therefore, we only have to take care of the determinant of s inverse and the determinant of s. And indeed, if we use the multiplicativity of the determinant again, we immediately get the determinant of the identity matrix here. And of course, there we already know, this is simply 1. In other words, only the characteristic polynomial of b remains on the right hand side which is exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, and with that we now have the nice result, the eigenvalues of similar matrices are exactly the same. And in fact, this property is something we will use later a lot when we want to find so-called perfect coordinate systems. In some sense we could say, this is the reason we are so interested in the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, the first very important result I can already tell you is that every normal matrix is similar to a diagonal matrix. So for example, a self-adjoint matrix is a normal matrix. And now, being similar to a diagonal matrix means that we find an invertible matrix S and a matrix where there are only non-zero entries on the diagonal. And indeed, these diagonal entries are exactly the eigenvalues of the matrix A. And moreover, we have to repeat them on the diagonal as many times as the algebraic multiplicities tell us. And this guarantees us that we have exactly n numbers on the diagonal. Okay, so we see this is a very strong result because calculating with diagonal matrices is much easier than calculating with general matrices. And as we have noted it here, having a normal matrix is sufficient for having this nice result but we will also see it holds for more matrices as well. However, the crucial thing here is it will not hold for just any matrix A. In fact, for a general square matrix, we only have a weaker result. Namely, we can't guarantee a diagonal matrix, but still a triangular one. So the result looks exactly the same, but with the difference that above the diagonal, we still can find numbers that are non-zero. Still, this is very helpful, because we have the result that the eigenvalues are on the diagonal as well. And as before, they are counted with the algebraic multiplicities. Now, if you are already interested in that result, one can make that more precise with the so-called Jordan normal form. And now the good thing is, I already have a video series about that, so you can already watch how to calculate this Jordan normal form. However, I would say we can also talk about that in a later video in this series. But before we can prove these strong results here, we really first have to know how to calculate eigenvectors. This is because inside this matrix S and S inverse, we find something that is related to the eigenvectors of A. This means calculating eigenvectors is something you need to do in order to get this transformation here. Okay, therefore, this is something we will do in the next video. So have a nice day and bye bye.